Hey friends, thanks for stopping by my channel. Today I've got five projects that I'm gonna be sharing that all look really expensive and high-end, but cost just a couple dollars to make with my craft supplies. I am so thrilled that you came to visit with me today. Now let's get crafting. I was at Hobby Lobby the other day when I came across this beautiful wire tower that had stacked pumpkins inside of it. I knew that I could recreate the look for a fraction of the cost because I happened to have picked up a few months back one of these wire racks myself from the Dollar Tree online. So today I'm gonna to be sharing how I am going to put this whole look together. These are such a statement piece to put on any table for the fall season. We are gonna be using the cone, a piece of foam core, some beaded garland, pumpkins, and then this Spanish moss. All of these things coming together are going to make the most beautiful DIY for the fall that is so easy to create. We're gonna start by removing the stems off of the pumpkins, and then I'm going to paint a couple of them to get the colors that I want for my fall decor for my home. Then we're going to start using some hot glue, making sure the pumpkins are nice and flat on the tops and bottoms so things stack nicely. I just kinda push things and smush things a little bit. Start hot gluing from the smallest at the top and largest at the bottom. The pumpkin at the very top is the one that gets the stem. And then you're going to just squish them up inside of this metal frame. Once everything is nice and glued in and in place, I'm going to take my tower and I'm going to trace the bottom circle onto the foam core. Then we're going to cut it out. And this part does not have to be exactly perfect to the size they're in. You actually want to have a little bit of hangover because it allows you to glue that metal frame onto the foam core. So make sure you have a little bit of an extra lip around the side. And then you're going to start adding on your Spanish moss. Now once you've gone all the way around it, everything's glued down, I'm going to go ahead and tuck that moss up inside of that metal frame. That way so I can expose the ends just a little bit so I can glue the frame down to the foam core board. So you can see here that I'm just tucking everything up around the bar, and then I'm gonna come in with my hot glue and glue everything down and in place. We don't wanna see that foam core on the end, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that moss back out a little bit to the edge, making sure that you don't see the white foam core or the bottom ring where everything is being attached so that way the moss will conceal it some and it just looks store bought. It looks exactly like the one that I saw at Hobby Lobby and I am only making mine for the set, the two of them and with all the pumpkins and the moss and the beaded garland and the frames that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. Everything together was about $12 for the two of them. Now at this point I decided I wanted to add on some beaded garland so I'm just taking it twisting it around my finger to make it kind of curly like a pumpkin vine would have. And then I'm kind of weaving it through the metal bar and just working my way up towards the top. You can embellish these however you want and have fun creating them. If you are enjoying the contents of this video, please do give it a thumbs up and consider clicking that subscribe button that's right down there in the corner where you will get notified for upcoming videos that I post weekly here on my channel. This project is so simple to recreate. I'm going to take a pack of painter sticks. There's 10 inside the pack that you can pick up at Home Depot and it's a dollar. I'm going to put eight of them side by side. And the last two, I'm going to measure it as the length of all of these eight. And then I'm going to cut it down to size with my miter box and my saw. I'll link it down below. I get asked all the time. This is my favorite one that I have. I'm going to just add on some hot glue and some wood glue, little dots. And I'm just going to add that all together 
to make sure it bonds well. And I'm not going to use any staple guns on this because I feel like the hold was well enough. Then I took it outside and I spray painted it a taupey tan color. And now I'm going to add on some rub-ons. Now if you have a vinyl cutting machine, you can totally use that too. But this makes just such a cute, easy sign that you can recreate and customize to whatever you want. And I want you to see that you don't have to have a vinyl cutting machine. You can hand paint the letters like I do a lot here on my channel or you can use stickers, or you can use rub-ons. There's so many options out there if you don't have a vinyl cutting machine in your budget. I know that a lot of times it's what crafters show here on YouTube, and I just want you to know that if you don't have one, that's okay, you can still be creative without spending a ton of money. Then at the very top, because there's no place like home, I put my little apostrophe up at the top, and now I'm going to add some greenery. I'm just gonna take some boxwood wrap a little bit of a gingham ribbon around it to hold those in place, glue that onto my sign, and then I'm going to add on a really beautiful white sunflower. I thought that this looked so pretty and can be used more than just for one particular season. You can use it year round. Then I'm gonna take my crocodile, one of my other favorite tools that I use a lot here on my channel, and I'm going to punch out two holes at the very top so that way we can have a beautiful ribbon that will allow it to be able to be hung up somewhere in your home. So I've decided to have my knots be on the outside because I just thought that that looked really cute. Once I've got my ribbon at the top it's ready to be hung up and displayed. I have had so much fun this fall season making all of these wreaths. I have been dreaming of all sorts of different color schemes and this one, I feel like these white sunflowers are the star of this wreath. Now let's move on to project number three where I'm gonna share all the steps on how I made this wreath. We are gonna be using the largest wreath form size that we can find, and I believe it's a 16 or 18 inch from the Dollar Tree, and a whole bunch of different florals. Now, almost every single thing came from the Dollar Tree except for this yellow flower, this little tiny wispy yellow flower. Everything else came from the Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna start by popping off all of these whimsy flowers, these yellow ones, because I like to have something light and airy on the outer and inner part of my ring and I'm going to show you what I mean. I start by first layering on something very dainty and flowy on the outside and I forgot to mention I did wrap around a ribbon. I just coiled it all around and glued it into place. Once I have that whimsy wispy flower on the outside I'm now going to come in with a very creamy carnation and again this is from the Dollar Tree these creamy carnations I'm just going to glue those sporadically around and then I'm gonna come in these flowers were put out for the fall 2021 season I love that they had that burgundy color inside so I added some of those then I'm gonna come in with this burlap orange flower I thought that this was just so beautiful and it added in that beautiful fall orangey color now I'm adding in some burlap hydrangea. I thought that this was really beautiful. And you can see at this point that it's really starting to come to life. And you could technically stop at these colors, but I'm gonna continue to take it a little bit further because I love playing with colors and I love trying to get that look in my house. So once I've got those hydrangeas in there, I'm now going to come in with my leaves. These leaves, I loved the color of them. I love that it had a yellow undertone to them. It looked very much so like a leaf you would see at the fall time. So I'm gonna fill in some of those areas. I think the thing with wreaths for me personally in particular, I like to make sure that the color is well balanced like you would see in a garden. I want everything to look natural and beautiful as much as possible. Now this is where the surprise color is gonna come in and it's gonna match that burgundy in those flowers we put on earlier. 
I'm going to add on three little clusters and each one has three flowers within those clusters of this red peony flower and now I'm going to add on the white sunflowers. There's a large and a small one that they have at the Dollar Tree and it really just starts to bring everything to life. Now make sure you always remove all of your hot glue gun strings because that is a thing. It makes it look like it was homemade. When you remove them, it makes it look more high end. Now I'm gonna come in with some pine cones and some little grains. I think that these are like wheat sticks. I'm, I'm not sure. Again, the Dollar Tree. And then the last flower I'm gonna be adding on is this leaf that comes off of the pick that has pumpkins. You can see some of the pumpkins are in there too, and this leaf. So I'm just gonna tuck all of that down in there and really just make sure that each thing has its own shiny moment. And at the very last finishing touch, I'm gonna add on a beautiful bow off to the side that won't compete with the colors. And I love how it turned out. Up next, I'm going to share how I made this pedestal and it's a two part craft. So this is the first one and this is the second, a beautiful pumpkin centerpiece that you can put on any table that looks so expensive and people would never believe that you made it yourself for just a couple dollars. I'm going to take this hanging sign from the Dollar Tree and then this stair rail and we're going to bring them together to create a beautiful stand that you can put a candle on, flowers, whatever you want. We're going to start by taking off the beaded handle and removing those staples and then we're going to cut down our stair rail to the size and height that we would want. And then I'm going to put that off to the side because now we're going to work on this frame. Go ahead and pop out that frame backing and we're going to trace it twice on a piece of paper. I'm going to use this old script paper. I thought this was pretty. And then I'm going to add on some Mod Podge and I'm going to just glue that on. Now I did not put the Mod Podge on the top of the paper because I didn't feel like it needed to be sealed since nothing wet will ever be on here. So I went ahead and just made sure that was a nice thick, not too thick, because that will cause your paper to wrinkle and buckle, but just enough to be able to adhere it down on there. And then once that was dry, I went ahead and popped it back into the frame. And now I'm going to get a wood round. I'm sorry, I forgot to mention that at the beginning of all these supplies, but I got a wood round as well from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to just fill those holes where the original hole was drilled. And I'm going to use my countersink drill bit to make sure that we don't have a screw that scratches our table ever. And then I'm going to drill through that. And this is going to allow none of the wood to splinter or crack whenever you go and drill a screw through it. So now at this point, I'm gonna to start to add in my screw. And friends, don't be intimidated by power tools. I promise drills are so fun to work with. It is amazing what you can do with making home DIYs when you use a drill. I accomplished so many fun projects with just using a drill. If I could convince you to do anything, I would say pick up a drill. You would have so much fun creating things with it. Now you can see here that I've fastened on the bottom, fastened on the top, and we've got ourselves a darling stand. Now at this point, you can decide what color you want to paint the base, or you could just leave it wood and leave it raw. It's totally up to you however you want to customize it. That's the best part about DIYing your own home decor because you get to customize it however you would like. So once I painted mine a really beautiful dark gray color, I sanded it and now we're going to move on to the next part, the two part of this. I have been holding on to this pumpkin since last fall. It cracked when it fell once, and this is from the Dollar Tree. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna just hold on to it because I'm sure I'll probably use it next season when it comes around again. And here we are where I'm finally able to use it. Now I decided it being cracked in half was actually kind of perfect because I'm just gonna take my scissors and cut off the top, and then I'm going to bring it back together. 
But before I do that with some E6000 and some hot glue, by the way, this little key that you put on really does the trick to get your glue all the way out. So again, I wanna thank my subscriber who sent that to me. I'm gonna go ahead and pop in a piece of foam so that we can turn this into a beautiful planter. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that E6000 and the hot glue, bring it together, hold it in place so everything can dry and really lock in. And now I'm gonna come in and neutralize this color. Orange is actually my favorite color, but this color is not what I'm going for for this project. So I'm gonna lighten it up so it has kind of a concrete, more neutral look to it. And now I'm gonna bring in some moss at the very top and start to add in all of my florals. I wanna have things kinda of cascading over the side a little bit. I thought that would be really pretty. So I'm coming in with a buttery carnation. It's almost like a peachy butter. Some white sunflowers, some eucalyptus, and then a couple other little sprigs here and there that I just happen to have in my flower tower that I have in my craft room. If you don't know what I'm talking about my flower tower, I'll link my video down below for my craft room tour where I show my flower tower. And then I'm gonna add on a couple of these wired berry sprigs and we are done. I hope that you have enjoyed this video today and these five projects. Leave a comment down below to let me know which one you like, which one you think you will try. And I'm gonna recommend a couple videos right here for you to check out if you enjoyed this video. Remember, please do give this video a thumbs up and until the next episode, bye friends.